In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. A very good morning and a warm welcome to our service, which is Communion by Extension. It's good that you're here joining us and worshipping in the best way we possibly can at the present time. It's our intention in the near future to broadcast from church, but whilst we're waiting for permission to install a camera system there, we'll continue to broadcast from either my home or Father Michael's. My name is Father Duncan, and I'm the curate at St. John's in Horninglow. This week, we've had notification from the Director for Public Health in Staffordshire that Horninglow is at increased risk uh, for coronavirus transmission. Churches and other places of worship have received new enhanced advice on how to manage coronavirus at this time. In light of this advice and in consultation with the Associate Archdeacon, I've made the decision to close the church for public worship and private prayer at this time. This decision will be reviewed on Thursday of this week when Father Michael returns, but it does mean that there will be no service on Wednesday morning in church this week and that church will be locked. This isn't something I've done lightly, but it is something I've taken advice on. I know that Father Michael would be with me in our and express our hope that in the near future, church will reopen and we will be able to be together to worship our Lord. Let's take a moment of quiet as we draw into God's presence at this time. And so we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and Amen. peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. To our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the, the Messiah, who is over all God-blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And so may I speak in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I live in a house where there are a range of different views on religion. Sometimes this surprises people who assume that because I am a member of the clergy, my family would naturally have the same view as me. Living with people who don't believe the same things may sound challenging but actually it's incredibly rewarding and a real privilege. One of the areas we often debate is the need for proof. Show me the proof. 
is often heard across the dinner table and it's particularly relevant in light of today's gospel reading. Over the last few weeks we've heard Jesus teaching using parables but today Jesus himself becomes the story when he performs what is arguably the most famous of all his miracles. The feeding of the 5,000, or the miracle of the five loaves and two fishes as it's also known, appears in all four gospel accounts. And whilst there are differences in the exact details of those accounts, the story suggests that a drama unfolded on the shores of Lake Galilee which was simply inexplicable as anything other than a miracle. Jesus had heard of the execution of John the Baptist. Naturally, he would have been troubled by this, and there would be disquiet amongst the disciples, who had recently returned from their first missionary journey. Jesus decides that it will be a good time for a retreat away from the crowds, and he finds a boat, and he removes himself to somewhere quiet and secluded. But the problem for Jesus was that by this time he was something of a celebrity, and people followed him wherever he went. Word had spread, and the crowds had formed. Now if you know anything about the geography of Lake Galilee, it's easy to understand how this could have happened. Jesus may have thought that he was rowing away to a quiet secluded spot, but the whole coastline is accessible and the crowds had worked out where Jesus had gone. As evening draws in, the disciples encourage Jesus to send the crowds away so that they can go and buy food for themselves. If you read the parallel account in John's Gospel, you get a real sense of the panic the disciples felt. How are we going to feed all these people who've come to see Jesus? In both Mark and John's accounts of the miracle, there is mention of the idea that one of the disciples could go and purchase bread for all the people present. In John's account, Philip states, 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Now it's difficult to know exactly what 200 denarii equates to in modern money, but to give you an idea, we believe that 300 denarii was a year's wage for a working person. So 200 denarii would have bought a lot of bread, and that must have meant there were an awful lot of people on the lakeside that day. Now the fact that Jesus performed a miracle here and transformed a tiny amount of food into a feast will undoubtedly have echoed the stories that the people who were there would have known from their childhoods growing up listening to the rabbis and priests in synagogues and temples. Those stories are particularly echoed in the book of Exodus. In chapter 16, we hear of the people of Israel on their journey out of Egypt. They're in the desert and they are starving. And Moses tells them God is going to rain bread from heaven for them. So seeing Jesus produce bread for thousands of followers will no doubt have stirred up memories of learning those stories and of their forefathers' exploits. God heard the cry for his people and sent them food. And Jesus echoes God's love for his people and he feeds them, both physically but also spiritually. But the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 has another meaning that's often missed. N.T. Wright captures this rather beautifully when he describes the child in John's Gospel account who brings the loaves and fishes forward. God asks us to give what we have to him. It doesn't matter if we're old or young, rich or poor. It doesn't matter if we are ordained clergy or lay people. God calls each and every one of us to give what we have to him. Now there are a number of ways that we can do this, but by far the most important is the simplest. 
prayer. When we pray to God, we demonstrate our love for him, and he will reward us with manna from heaven. In our modern world, miracles and the miraculous challenge us. In a world where people seek proof, a belief in that which is mysterious is often ridiculed and seen as antiquated. I see a belief in the mysterious as something which is beautiful and brings joy. I no longer constantly seek to prove and instead choose to enter into the mystery which my faith embraces. Of course that doesn't always answer the questions my family may challenge me with, but it does lead to really interesting debate and lengthy discussions. Sometimes we simply agree to differ in our views, knowing it's unlikely I will ever be able to prove that a miracle actually happened, but also acknowledging that not everything that occurs can be explained. Talking to people about faith is an essential part of who we are and we should actively seek to do it, but we should do so in the knowledge that we live in a world which seeks proof and demands concrete facts. Put simply, we cannot always give this and we have to accept that there will be people who disagree with us. Learning to respect and love those who don't believe and learning to accept that God's world is richer and more joyous because of them is a challenge we must all rise to. But at the same time, we must never be afraid to articulate the more complex and intricate aspects of our faith which others may ridicule. The feeding of the 5,000 is such an important miracle that it appears in all four Gospels. It's the only one that does. If you wanted to explore your beliefs and feelings about miracles, this would not be a bad place to start. So why not set yourself a simple challenge? This week, read all four accounts of the miracle side by side. It's easy to do, particularly if you have a computer, you can just Google it and they'll appear next to each other. Consider the differences in the accounts and decide if it makes you question the miracle or if it makes no difference to your views. Whatever answer you find yourself coming up with, spend some time in prayer. Shape a conversation with God about miracles and their role in your faith and life. And next time you get the opportunity to talk to someone about your faith, share the joys of the mysterious, share the inexplicable, share the unknown, and don't be afraid to challenge them about their views on those things. Sharing your faith, even the really hard bits of it, is what we're called to do. Amen. And so we join together in making our profession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made known. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world and for all people according to their needs. Lord, as we wrestle with faith and doubt, help us to engage with you as Jacob did. We give thanks that you have shown your love through the hope and forgiveness of the new covenant. Make us worthy heirs to the patriarchs, prophets and disciples who kept the flame of faith alive while darkness, enmity and indifference stalked the land. Renew in us today the struggle against apathy and ignorance and empower all those who spread your word with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Let the example of the feeding of the 5,000 inspire a church with diminishing resources to punch above its weight, to grow numbers and doers, to raise up future leaders and to sustain and encourage existing con congregations. Let ministry precede money and mission precede ministry so that your will and purpose are carried out and your abundance multiplied. Lord, in your mercy. Let the anguish that we feel for the state of the world lead to lasting change in our lives through action and argument, through prayer and supplication. We pray especially for the people of the new province of Alexandria in the Episcopal Church of Jerusalem and the Middle East. May sense prevail and reconciliation bring peace and may we know your will as we worry about whether there is such a thing as a just war. Protect peacekeeping troops everywhere, and especially our armed forces at this time. Lord, in your mercy. In our own community, we pray for Father Michael, Father Duncan, and all those who lead our community in worship and prayer. May they be inspired by your word and strengthened by your sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. As we remember those who are sick in mind, body and spirit, we ask for your healing presence to take away all harm from those who have asked for our prayers. Annabelle, Derek, Deborah, Catherine, Joan, Peter, Leslie, Betty, Gary, Addy, Russell, Lucas, Donna, Pam, Les, Derek, Rosie, James, Douglas, Judy. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have died and are now at rest, including Paul Birchall, Giuseppina Fretzer, Enid Ashford, Lucy Shaw, Joan Gilson, Frieda Shepherd. We also remember those whose years mind fall at this time. Anne Littler, Joe Hardy, Joan Hughes, Gordon Hackman, Edith Stott, Annie Dixon, Thomas Whitehall, Wilson Gale, Francis King, Doris Taylor. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace.
joining our prayers with Mary, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In fellowship with the whole Church of God, with all who have been brought together by the Holy Spirit to worship on this day, and particularly with our brothers and sisters in this Church who have celebrated the Eucharist, let us rejoice that we are called to be part of the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The peace of the Lord be always with you, also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace A reading from the Gospel of Luke. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem and there they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen, and has appeared to Simon. And so as we prepare to receive God in this most holy of sacraments, we say together, Blessed are you, God of those who hunger and thirst, for you give us our food in due season, you nourish us with your word, which is the bread of life. You strengthen us with your spirit and the wine of your kingdom. In Christ you are food for the hungry, refreshment for the weary. Blessed are you, our creator and redeemer. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And so we pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Church of God, of which we are members, has taken bread and wine and given thanks over them according to our Lord's command. These holy gifts 
have been brought to us that we too might share in the communion of the body and blood of Christ. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life Glory to you forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.